Greetings to all, and welcome back to the last part of a series of lectures on cross-couplings. By now, you must be well aware of the main principles covering cross-coupling reactions. In this section, I will demonstrate selected applications of cross-couplings, including selective multifunctionalization as well as the synthesis of natural products, agrochemicals, pharmaceuticals, and materials. I want to start with a remarkable transformation developed in the group of Catalani. They have found that when a cross-coupling reaction involving aryl halides is conducted in the presence of bicyclic olefins like norbornene, the reaction ends up with the formation of a polyfunctionalized product. Starting from a monofunctionalized aryl halide, it is possible to obtain a 1, 2, 3, trisubstituted arene in good yields and selectivity. To understand what is going on here, one should briefly go through the mechanism of the reaction. The Catalani reaction begins with the oxidative addition of a palladium-0 pre-catalyst to the aryl halide. The generated palladium-2 species undergo an insertion, including norbornene. In the insertion product, beta-hydride elimination is not possible, as one of the beta protons is unable to adopt a syn conformation with palladium, while the other is at the bridgehead of a bridged ring and cannot eliminate. As that would create an sp2 hybridized carbon at the bridgehead, significantly increasing the strain in norbornene. Instead, the inserted norbornene directs palladium to the ortho CH bond and initiates a regio selective CH activation, which will be discussed in detail in the next module. The form palladocycle can then undergo another oxidative addition with an electrophilic coupling partner present in the reaction media, forming a palladium 4 intermediate presented here. Palladium-4 species are normally unstable and revert to the palladium-2 insertion products to norbornene by a reductive elimination. The reductive elimination forms the first carbon-carbon bond, and if the R-group ortho to the insertion site is a proton, then the CH activation sequence can start again and can lead to the second carbon-carbon bond forming event. After the functionalization of ortho positions, the main stabilization pathway for the palladium-2 species shown here is the reverse process to norbornene insertion which can also be called a beta-carboanion elimination. Norbornene insertion is a reversible process, which means that it can be used in catalytic quantities. After the elimination of norbornene, the generated palladium-2 species can proceed to a transmetallation event if there is an organometallic reagent present or another insertion if there are other olefins available. The transmetallation can end with the reductive elimination generating the tri-substituted product and the active pre-catalyst while olefin insertion can lead to the HET coupling product and the active pre-catalyst. The Catalani reaction has found many implications in organic synthesis. For instance, lenoxapin is a polysubstituted aromatic natural product from the lignin family and has long been used for the treatment of pain, rheumatoid arthritis, and warts. The Catalani reaction has proven to be an effective method for the selective polyfunctionalization of RNs used in the synthesis of lenoxapin and its analogs. The key step in the total synthesis of lenoxapin is presented here. It is based on the use of the Catalani reaction for the regioselective double functionalization of intermediate 5 with an alkyl iodide and an acrylate. In the following step, the introduced olefin was oxidatively cleaved to an aldehyde, which was followed by an aldol cyclization with gamma butyrolactone. The last step of the synthesis was the intramolecular HEC coupling, leading to lenoxapin. Other cross-couplings are also extensively used in the synthesis of natural products. Here, the structure of vancomycin, a natural antibacterial cyclic peptide, is presented. One of the key steps in the total synthesis of vancomycin was the construction of the underlying biaryl moiety. The group led by Niccolo was the first to report the full total synthesis of vancomycin. In their approach, the biaryl moiety was constructed through the palladium-catalyzed Suzuki coupling shown here. The rotation around the newly formed carbon-carbon bond is constrained due to steric hindrance, leading to the formation of two diastereomers in a 2 to 1 ratio. The diastereomers were separated before proceeding to the next steps of the synthesis. In another report, following shortly after the work from the group of Niccolo, Boger and his colleagues applied a similar strategy to forge the crucial biaryl linkage. However, in this case, they obtained an almost 1 to 1 ratio for the diastereomeric biarals. Another report from the group of Niccolo demonstrated the total synthesis of sangliferin A based on multiple cross-couplings. The cornerstone of the devised synthetic strategy was the proposed late-stage regio-selective still macrocyclization of bisvinyl iodide precursor to generate the 22-membered ring intermediate. 
to which the complex spiralactam side chain would be appended through a second still coupling process. The first still coupling was an intramolecular process and led to the formation of the 22-membered ring and 62% yield and complete stereoselectivity. The regioselectivity of the macrocyclization was controlled by sterics, with only the least sterically hindered vinyl iodide participating in the coupling. The second still coupling was based on the use of the newly formed macrocycle possessing the second vinyl iodide moiety in the previously prepared spiralactam side chain equipped with an alkanil standing subunit. Both couplings were enabled by a palladium catalyst combined with triphenylarsine used as a ligand. The dimeric alkaloid psychotetramine can be synthesized by an impressive example of a palladium catalyzed carbon nitrogen coupling reaction. The formation of this bond represents a very challenging interrelation as it involves two highly hindered fragments an ortho substituted aryl bromide and an alpha substituted indole. Moreover, the reaction is highly regioselective, leaving two additional NH groups unprotected. After thorough optimization of the reaction conditions, a rufos based catalyst provided the best yield for the inerylated product. Attempts to improve the result by employing an excess of the nucleophile or slow addition of the catalyst were unsuccessful. Only the use of an excess of aryl bromide was beneficial to the yield, which, however, was not cost-effective. The synthesis of a wide range of agrochemicals includes at least one step based on cross-couplings. For instance, Bixofen is a fungicide developed by Bayer and is used for the treatment and prevention of various leaf diseases. It is produced by a sequence of transformations starting with the palladium-catalyzed Sinogashira coupling presented here. The alkanylation is followed by a Diosolder reaction to construct the second phenyl ring of the key intermediate in the synthesis. Another elegant route is based on the Suzuki coupling between dichlorophenyl boronic acid and the derivative of 2-bromoacetanolide. The Suzuki coupling is enabled by the triterpbutylphosphine ligand. Biphenazate is an insecticide used for mite control. The synthesis of biphenazate is based on the buckwald hartwig amination, including the derivatives of biaryl bromide and hydrazine. The carbon-nitrogen bond formation is enabled by BINAP combined with palladium acetate. Over the last three decades, cross-couplings have become a reliable and indispensable tool for the synthesis of pharmaceuticals. This development was predominantly influenced by the advancement of modern phosphines, NHC ligands, and preformed catalysts. I want to start with an example of how cross-couplings contribute to the discovery of new antibiotics. For instance, antibiotics based on 4-quinolone as a key structural motif contain a piperazine core. Various modifications to the piperazine core can introduce new chemical, structural, and biological properties into the drug backbone. With this in mind, Beatty and colleagues prepared a number of ciprofloxacin analogs by incorporating derivatives of piperazine into the 4-quinolone backbone. For this purpose, they applied a chemoselective buckwald hartwig amination built on chlorinated 4-quinolones. The cross-coupling reactions occurred most efficiently with BINAP as a supporting ligand. Here is another example reported by Amgen on the multi-kilogram preparation of thalazine, which is used for the treatment of inflammatory conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis and psoriasis. The key step in the synthesis was based on the Suzuki coupling involving thalazine chloride and this boronic acid. They managed to obtain the product of the coupling on a 5-kilogram scale with a 90% yield. The main side reaction of the process was the protodeborination of the boronic acid, as the reaction was performed in protic solvents. However, this side process could be minimized by the application of SFOS as a ligand. The key intermediate of the synthesis was purified by recrystallization and transformed into the final product through amidation. SFOS is one of the prominent ligands in the field, and the high activity of the catalytic system based on SFOS enabled a very low catalyst loading for this multi-kilogram scale process. Scientists from Pfizer reported the kilogram scale synthesis of the highlighted multifunctionalized arene using multiple HEC couplings. This new drug candidate can be used for the treatment of asthma, unstable angina, deep vein thrombosis, and coronary atherosclerosis. Taking advantage of the difference in reactivity between aryl iodides and aryl bromides under HEC reaction conditions, the researchers from Pfizer chemo selectively coupled this polyhalogenated substrate and ethyl acrylate at the iodide. The product of the first HEC coupling was formed in a 79% yield after crystallization from methanol. GCMS analysis of the crude mixture showed that the yield of the bisacrylation byproduct, formed from the olefination at bromide, was only 0.4%. 
Subsequently, the product of the first olefination was coupled at the bromide with in-vinyl thalamide and a second Heck reaction performed at an elevated temperature in xylene used as a solvent. Remarkably, the yields of both Heck couplings were reproducible in the absence of phosphine ligands. Cross-couplings are frequently used in the preparation of monomers for the production of value-added polymers. For instance, the highlighted functionalized acrylate can be used to produce self-healing polymers with sensing attributes. The functionalized acrylate was prepared by applying the buckwald hartwig amination between this spirocyclic chlorinated arene and an acrylate possessing an amino group. The reaction was enabled by a palladium catalyst based on Beller's diadomantyl and butylphosphine. Azeocenes highlighted here are commonly employed as structural core units in numerous organic transistors and organic light-emitting diode materials. Following an approach based on the buckwald hartwig amination involving biseryl halides and bisanilines, Buns and colleagues prepared the first stable diazoheptacenes. For this purpose, they applied a highly active preformed palladium catalyst based on Rufos in the first-generation palladocycle introduced by the group of Buckwald. In another study reported by the group of Kido, the buckwald hartwig amination was used to introduce a series of fluorescent dyes into organic light-emitting diodes. The fluorescent dyes were synthesized through palladium-catalyzed double-carbon-nitrogen bond-forming reactions between derivatives of bromofluorine and aminoperylene. For this reaction, they applied the original conditions based on the use of the DPPF ligand developed by Hartwick. Many related studies on the use of cross-couplings for the invention of materials can be found in thematic journals on materials sciences. To sum it up, in this module, you have learned about the most important cross-coupling reactions. We systematically examined the most successful phosphine and NHC ligands, as well as preformed catalysts used in cross-couplings. We explored the activity pattern and common substrates applied in couplings and the factors determining selectivity in cross-couplings. Finally, we briefly covered several specific applications of cross-coupling technologies. All the best with your midterm evaluations and see you in the next module.